All right. Welcome, everybody. We got a nice crowd tonight for our first Power Up series. Uh, I'd like to introduce Lisa Richards. She is going to be our um, our speaker here tonight. And Lisa, you may want to raise your hand so that you'll actually be um, um, in the in the foremost front and center here. Um, and what I'd like to do is just tell you a little bit about Lisa. She is a frequency influencer, a meditation master, spirit communicator, and dowser. She is the owner of Pyramid Surge, where she intuitively designs accessories for Stargate meditation pyramids and designs other energy transformation tools. She is head researcher and vice chairman of the Pyramid Science Foundation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to pyramid energy research, and also co-hosts the Pyramid Science Foundation live stream, along with Charlie Zeese of Stargate Pyramids. She is also a researcher of ancient knowledge, which has led her down many paths and sharing what she has learned is her passion. Lisa flies high on energy and those who do too will be guided to her. Humanity must awaken to their true potential and Lisa believes it is her mission to show them how. It is time to power up. Lisa, take it away. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It is definitely time to power up and I think we can all feel that. But yeah, it is time. We need to start you know, waking up to our true power. And that's what I'm really passionate about. There's so many things that have been hidden from us and we can all see them unraveling before our eyes. Um, but right now, I think a lot of us feel like we're living in the twilight zone. You know, if something odd could happen tomorrow and it wouldn't phase any of us anymore. But um, the same way that I think that it affects us energetically, we need to start tuning out to all the draw tuning away from all the drama and tuning into ourselves and our true power. Um, and that's what I'm here to teach. I'm going to tell you mainly about my story today, my awakening and a little bit about my life and how I fell into all of this. Um, and then we're going to go over some of the different topics that I would like to discuss or that we can discuss and just kind of get everybody's uh, opinions on, you know, other things that come to mind. I know a lot of you are probably like myself, where when one door opens, it opens 20 more doors. You know, I like to say I'm, I'm not a master really of anything, but I know pretty much a little bit about everything. And I think that's what we all need to do. Um, and even though I know it doesn't mean it's the truth, you know, so please take everything with a grain of salt. My truth is not your truth you know, but these are, these are my truths and this is what I'm going to share today. So I think that's how we are going to get to the real truth though, down the road is by comparing truths and experiences. So, um, but like Tammy said, um, if you guys can just put your comments in the chat, your questions, and then we'll leave some time at the end to make sure to answer those. And we would like to stick, this is going to be a series every Thursday, but we would love to stick to the time limit. You know, some people um, don't like when it goes over. Yeah, I know everybody has busy lives. And so we would like to stick to the seven to eight um, if possible. Um, so we're going to start today um, just with a very quick heart-based meditation. And I didn't have time to get any type of music for it, but um, I just want everybody, if you could, you know, just sit back and relax and close your eyes and just take a couple deep breaths in and out and relax, relax your shoulders, you know, relax your neck, kind of wiggle your neck around a little bit. It's where you usually hold all the tension. Ground your feet into the floor, connect with that mother earth energy. And envision a small miniature version of yourself in your mind, scurrying around, going about your day. And up ahead, you see an elevator. And I want you to walk over to that elevator and push the button. It's a heart-shaped button. And the door opens. And as you step inside, you can feel a blast of warmth. And it's a tingly sensation. And you, the doors close. And you start going down, down, slowly down, headed towards the heart. And as you get closer to the heart, you can feel the elevator warming up even more. And then as you come to a halt, 
the doors open and you're surrounded by a beautiful pink light. And you see a box on the floor up ahead and you step out of the elevator and you open up that box. And as soon as you open it, you are blasted with all the love and compassion that you've hold, you've been holding inside, that you've been hiding inside. And just hold on to that and resonate with that feeling. And as you absorb that energy, that loving, warmth, pink energy, it disappears. It's no longer in your hands, but your hands start to glow. And you just hold your hands out. And just envision everybody that's with us today connecting with that warm, pink, loving energy. And just allow the waves of love to flow over you. And just take a few deep breaths in and out. Where we step away from the mind and into the heart. And when you're ready, you come back to us and hold on to that loving energy. And that's what we're going to hold on to today for this session. Short and sweet, but gets you is something that you can do, you know, throughout your busy day, something to just get you centered really quick. So I call them, um, uh, I do a little bit longer sessions as well um, on the Pyramid Science Foundation, and they're called the Love Blast Meditations. We go a little bit more in depth, but it's, you get the gist of it. <laughs> so I want to welcome everybody, first of all, welcome so much. I'm so glad to see so many people here today. Hi, Hal. Saw you yesterday. I see some familiar faces from yesterday. <laughs> um, but I just want to start off with a story, okay? This is my awakening story. So it was about 10 or 11 years ago, okay? Um, I was a single mother for several years of two children, um, never got child support, was always busting my butt, you know, working a couple of different jobs, trying to make ends meet, um, moving along with my busy life, missing out on my children's lives because I have to work all the time. Um, so I ended up in the restaurant business. Um, I made good money making tips and that was the only thing that made sense to me. I tried college, you know, but in order for me to go to college full time, um, I had to study full time and I had to work full time as well. So it was just not doable for me. Um, Western Union service for international money transfer. And, and <laughs> that's okay. And um, so I ended up um, in the restaurant business. Always uh, busted, you know, like I was saying, always busting my butt, tr getting to the top, was one of the top workers at every place that I worked at. And they always wanted me to be a manager, yet never understanding that I made way more money in tips. And so they wanted me to work 20 more hours a week and, you know, make way less money. So I never did that, you know, until my final about several years, I became an event coordinator, organizing weddings. Um, comedy shows, event parties, corporate parties, and stuff like that. And I really loved it, you know, thought I was doing something great, especially on the wedding uh, part, part of it. But I came to a point where I started seeing all the couples that were married, um, either putting on a show, trying to outdo their other friend who just got married, or getting divorced two months later. Like, so that meaning that I finally found really was unmeaningful, unmeaningful to me anymore, you know, and I remember ta sitting there talking to the owner of the business and I said, don't you think there's more to life than this? And he, him being from a manufacturing company just looked at me like I was crazy, you know, <laughs> and I'm sure he probably still thinks I'm crazy to today, you know, but that really kind of escalated me to look for other things. And I ended up quitting my job without having anything to fall back on. And within two weeks, I had three part-time jobs working um, half the amount of hours, but making the same amount of money. And they were fulfilling jobs, like taking care of an, an elderly man who had lost his wife to cancer, who didn't have any family in the area. You know, I worked for a DJ service um, as their event coordinator. So I'd go and, you know, have fun at the parties and stuff. Um, it was just a lot of fun. I, I ended up working at an organic farm and learning, you know, how to actually uh, 
not only grow produce and food, but grow the animals appropriately and treat them right and respect their lives. Um, and that just escalated, escalated me to where I am now because it, for the first time in my life, that opened up some time for me to have a hobby. I was never able to have a hobby. And that's why so many people these days, you know, I feel so bad. I was one of those people. People would say, what do you do for fun? I don't do anything for fun. You know, that was where I was at when I was in the restaurant business. You didn't have time, you know, and then the time that you did have, you would dedicate to your children. So this opened up a whole new world for me. And I started with organic gardening. And then I started doing a lot of research, you know, I was always on the high honor roll through high school. Um, I wasn't able to go to college because my daughter, I had her right after high school. And so that kind of uh, postponed me in that avenue. Um, but everything happens for a reason. So I learned more um, doing my own research through the internet with my following my passions as more and more doors opened. Um, than I could ever have learned in school or even college, you know, if I would have went to college, it's, I, I geared my education towards what my desires were and, you know, it still happens to this day. Like I said, one door, um, opens, it's flings about 20 more open that I'm curious about as well. And then before I forget this little technique. So if anybody does research, um, do not use Google. And I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this. Do not use, um, um, even DuckDuckGo, DuckDuckGo is pretty bad right now as well. Um, but if you use, there's a Russian-based um, browser called Yandex, Y-A-N-D-E-X, or Brave Browser, B-R-A-V-E. And um, people are unaware that when you Google something, your, int your intention is you're Googling information from the whole World Wide Web, but you're not. Google is limiting what we see. And um, the owner of Stargate Pyramids, my business partner, Charlie, he was trying to get in touch with the owner of um, the guy who did was in charge of the Russian research for pyramid energy in Russia. And he could never find his information on Google. And I, when I saw him, I met him, I told him about this, and he instantly put his information in uh, Yandex and it instantly popped up. And he got in contact with him immediately. So there's so much information that's hidden out there that Google will not share with you. And it's intentional. It's to keep us dumbed down and keep us, you know, to keep us obeying. But so anyway, um, to expand on my story now. So now I have hobbies. I'm doing organic gardening. So then I get into um, the power of magnetism and how it affects plants and their growth. I start vermicomposting, which is, you know, raising red worms um, to create compost for your garden. Black gold is what the farmers call it. And I've discovered through my experimentation that the, the worms multiply, uh, reproduce way faster when the south pole of a magnet is facing towards them. And I found that just by coming upon an article about a fisherman who had a cup of worms out in his garage and the next day, um, the worms had eaten through the cup and they were attached to the south side of a horseshoe magnet that was right beside it. And so my work just started escalating from there. I ended up getting into pyramid energy and it wasn't the pyramids that I'm making now. It's actually the Giza Cheops pyramids. I got into orgone energy after that. Um, but then I start, then I started to, I wanted to connect more spiritually. I was never, um, a religious person. I was never, I always was very curious. I knew there was way more to the world than we were told. I always remember looking up at the sky, you know, when I was a teenager and be like, and saying to myself, this place is so effing weird, you know, because it is, it's just, it didn't make any sense to me. And people scurrying around, just going job to job and having no meaning to their life. It, you know, there's so much more that we should be connecting with. And it just didn't make sense to me. So the old man that I worked for, he had lost his um, wife five years prior. And there was an event in uh, not too far from here where they had some mediums from Lilydale coming. And my grandmother had passed away about 10 years prior to that. And that was really the catalyst that kind of threw me off into another world for a while. You know, I just moved away about an hour away from my friends and family after that. She was like a mother to me. And I took it pretty hard and I just wanted to be by myself away from people. And so I really, it had been 10 years since she passed and 
I wanted to believe that you could communicate with spirit, but I was still skeptical. And so we set up a couple appointments and, um, I don't know if you know Gretchen Clark or not. She's a really highly recognized medium in Lilydale. She was the one that gave me my me- my reading, okay? And she is like one of the, she's not one of the mediums who's like, "Oh, you know, this is going to be like this and you're going to have a great experience." She's like, "I'm telling you what's going on and you better believe it because this is this is the stuff I'm getting, you know?" <laughs> she's very strict like that. And um as a first time reading, it's kind of a little abrupt for some people, you know? So anyway, we were up on the, I was up there at the table and she was um, uh, starting to tune in. And the first thing she said was, she said, I have an old lady here with me and her hands are just going like crazy, like she's crocheting or knitting or something. And I started to believe a little bit because my grandmother was always crocheting all the time, crocheting blankets for everybody, for graduation, pot holders, everything. Um, But my grandmother knew that I was not truly believing. (laughs) So she said a little bit more, you know, she was dancing around, um, you know, having a good old time. And then pretty soon, this was like five minutes into the reading, the medium stopped and she looked right at me and she said, who's Catherine? And instantly (laughs) I could feel my grandma manifesting behind her like I was like that's I had tears in my eyes and I was like that's my grandma and I knew you know mm, that it was true anyway after that that door opened and my uncle came through who committed suicide who was supposed to be in hell right how how did he come through (laughs) you know my um grandfather who was a mean son of a bitch so people probably thought he should be in hell he came through as well And he told me how he was waiting for my grandmother and he was going to treat her the way that he should have treated her in life. Um, (laughs) Hold on. Take your time. (laughs) Yeah, no, I I can feel it. (laughs) (laughs) Take a deep breath. Okay. Anyway, so after the reading, I said to Gretchen Clark, I said, oh, my God, you have the most amazing job. You just proved to me that there's no death and that our loved ones are with us all the time. And um, she said, well, you can do this, too. (laughs) It's like playing the piano. Some people are better at it than others. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I thought you had to be born with this ability. I didn't know this is something that you could learn. And um, so she directed me to a spiritualist church that was about, it was still a little bit of a drive. It was about 45 minutes away from where I live. And I started to go to that church. And um, there were some mediums from Lilydale that have been doing mediumship for many, many years. They taught Reiki and um mediumship and all of that and i learned how to do it you know i it was so amazing to me because it was a basic like one day class for like a few hours (laughs) it wasn't anything like super in depth it was the work that you have to do is in depth for yourself though you know it's learning how to quiet your mind and and listening and paying attention to what's going around you paying attention to your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions You know, we're constantly getting bombarded with messages every day that most of us are ignoring because we're too hung up in this 3D reality. And um, so, yeah. Anyway, I started down the path of mediumship and I didn't want to start doing readings for people with the anticipation of them wanting something profound from me when I was just learning, you know, that was intimidating to me. So I actually practice with pictures and I just put a little feeler out on Facebook one day. And I was like, you know, if anybody has any loved ones in spirit, I'm practicing um, mediumship and, you know, send me a picture of your loved one and I'll tune in and see what I can get for you. And then of course, um, 
not only did I get pictures, I got bombarded with, oh, my aunt telling me that it was her Christian duty to tell me I was going to hell because I was communicating with spirits and this and that, you know, (laughs) but I didn't care. I had found something so profound. I did not care. I don't care what anybody says. I never, I would never feel any of this is evil. I've never to this day felt any of this was bad. And um, if anything, it's the most healing thing that you can do for yourself. You know, a profound reading is the most healing thing that you can do, but you have to go in with an open mind because they do utilize your energy for that communication. Your loved ones in spirit are always with you, but they communicate through you um, to the medium. So you have to be open to that. If you're shut off, you're going to be shut off to the messages and then think that the medium is fake. You know, it's just as simple as that, but um, so I, I, I was believing, you know, I had the profound reading. I was a believer, but I still didn't truly believe in myself that I could do this. And, um, the very first reading I did though, somebody sent me a picture of their grandfather. And so I sat there and I meditated at night, my dogs and animals, everybody was asleep. It was quiet in my house. And I said, um, you know, ask my guides to come through and find this person in spirit. And um, if they couldn't find them to bring someone on their behalf to communicate. And then I just sit there with my eyes closed and pay attention to what comes to mind. And so I see things like through kind of like a grayscale when my eyes are closed, like a pencil sketch, there's no color to it. But then I hear things in my mind. I can smell things, um, feel things, if you feel different energies and stuff like that. Um, and sometimes very rarely, but I'll hear things with my physical ears as well. So I was sitting there and had my eyes closed, waiting to communicate with this grandfather in spirit. And the first thing I saw was a black lab walking, walking by a dog, a black lab. And then I heard the name teddy bear. And then I smelled Vicks vapor rub. And so I was like, this is freaking weird. I said, I don't, I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, this doesn't mean anything. You know, I must be not on the right channel or something. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to tell the girl what I was getting, but my teacher taught me to always tell them what they're, what you're getting, because even though it doesn't mean something to you, it means something to them. And so I told the girl, um, you know, hey, this is what I was getting. I saw a black lab. I heard the name teddy bear and I smelled Vicks vapor rub. And she goes, oh, my God, I had a black lab who passed away. He sat on my lap all the time. So I called him my 100-pound teddy bear. And the vet told me to put Vicks Vapor Rub on. He had a lesion on his leg. And the vet told me to put Vicks Vapor Rub on it. And I was like, no shit. You know, like, I don't know if I can say that. But, yeah, I was shocked. I was shocked because I was like, oh, my God, this is real. You can't make this stuff up. You know, (laughs) it's not like, hey, grandma's here and she says she loves you. It is profound, specific information that is detail oriented just for you to wake you up, you know, and that's really what set me on the trajectory, you know, of I ended up finding Reiki healing and then I started making orgone pyramids and um, doing readings for people and um, doing energy healings for people and just helping them on that path. But then what I discovered was. It was kind of like fishing. I was getting people and getting them to where I wanted them to be or where I felt that their awakening would happen. But then they got lazy. They just wanted me to do all the work for them, me to communicate for them, you know, and I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted them to learn that they had the power to do this as well. And so that's kind of where I'm at now. I just want to teach people you know, all of this information that I've been learning. I've, I've traveled to Italy. Um, That same elderly man that I worked for, he had a slight case of Parkinson's and he actually sent me to Italy to learn about pulsed electrical magnetic therapy. Um, They were using this certain device over there. It had uh, ion cyclotron resonance as well. So it it wasn't your standard PEMF device. But they were using it over there to heal things of ca- like cancer and all kinds of things. It was a medical device in Italy. And um, these ladies that I went to Italy with, they had went over there 11 times to try to convince this guy to start selling his device in Canada and the States because of, you know, how sick people are over here and how much it would help them. And he finally agreed to start selling it in Canada, but he said he would never sell it in the U.S. because the FDA would come over and kill him. 
Um, the ladies, actually, there are some in the States, but they go under the radar. The FDA finally did allow them in the U.S., um, but you can't, they're not a medical device. They um, are only, you can only say they're used to enhance your chi energy. That's how you can list them. And, you know, the ladies that brought it into the country said to the, the FDA, you know, they're like, so this device is used to heal cancer in Italy and in Canada and for all these other things. You don't take that into consideration when it comes into the U.S. And she said, no, we don't care what it's used for in other countries. We'll list it however we want. So there are a lot of devices here already like that that go under the radar. You know, somebody's not going to pay. Well, a practitioner is not going to pay fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for a device and only be able to advertise it to enhance your chi energy and not, you know, not the full benefits of it. Um, rich people, I'm sure, some of them have it, but they've actually been using those devices all over um for a long time. You know, that's why when professional athletes break their, let's say they break break their collarbone, the the bone that takes the uh, longest to heal, they're back they're back out there in a couple of weeks. And it's because they're using those um, pulsed electrical magnetic devices to help. Bring I see that there's one, one question in the chat uh, that we're going to ask her about the pyramids. Um, I know tonight uh, is really just a uh, kind of get to know Lisa and, and where we're going to be going with this power up series. So, um, you know, so, we definitely want to make sure we we ask some questions about what things that we want to, how can we take our power back? What can we do? How can we um, help ourselves? So, yep. Back to you, Lisa. Yes. So anyway, that's one of the topics that we can delve into. You know, I've learned a lot of, I've did a lot of research or I've done a lot of research the past several years on all types of energetic ways of healing, you know crystal energy, pyramid energy, orgone energy. I used to go to Canada to the big health conferences up there. And I was just surprised that we don't have those types of events down here. We do, but not to the extent they had them up there. You could go for an entire weekend, a three day event, um, six rooms with speakers back to back on different health topics, a whole panel session of speakers, plus hundreds of vendors for 50 bucks for the entire weekend. You know, that's something around here. If they had that, it would probably be 300 and some dollars out of a lot of people's price ranges. Um, you know, so um, they used to have the Tesla electric festival up in Canada. And my daughter and I used to travel up there as well. Um, on our way back from one, it was, they always held it on Tesla's birthday. And I'm sure some of you are aware that he powered the, um, the fair with the Niagara Falls. So um, I was surprised when we came through, we stopped on the Canadian side of the falls and they were celebrating Tesla and his birthday. They had a huge copper statue of him. Um, they had a big band. There was literally thousands of people there. And um, on the other side of the falls, nothing, nothing, nothing at all for Tesla's accomplishments. Um, you know, that's where it goes into the free energy. You know, that's why. Um, Tesla designed his pyramid or his pyramid, his um, Warden Cliff Tower for free energy based on the geometry of the pyramids um, that they make in Russia now. So there are a lot of <laughs> secrets like that that I like to unravel. You know, I want to I like tr to try to connect the dots, I should say. Um, but I want to try to find is what I want to do is find simple, easy ways things that aren't expensive, things that you can do for yourself, you know, like grounding. Grounding is the very first thing that I always, excuse me, tell people about to help escalate their health. And I have a multimeter that I rigged up where you can actually test your own body's um, electricity, your body's energy level, and then see how it goes down when you step on the ground. You know, something we have access to all the time. Um, a couple other topics. Um, I talked about um, EMFs. I actually went to Italy with Dr. Magda Havis. She's like the number one researcher in um, electrical magnetic frequencies and how they affect our health. Um, she's from Canada as well. Um, so there's a lot of research on that that needs awareness to, you know, simple things like if you have a metal roof on your house, 
you might think it's protecting you from frequencies, but if you have frequencies in the house, it's now bombarding you with more of the frequencies from inside your home because now they're trapped and they can't get out. So instead of getting hit with one frequency, like say from your Wi-Fi router, now it's bouncing around and hitting you multiple times. Um, things like geopathic stress, you know, the energies of the earth that we're not aware of. Um, many, many years ago, um, before a home was built, they would dig up an ant hill and they would put that right on the spot where they were going to build the home. If the ants stayed, that meant there was geopathic stress there and that is harmful to people. So don't build your home there. Um, if the ants left, that meant it was, it was safe to build your home there. It was healthy for humans. So how many of us have ants in your house? That is a sign that there is geopathic stress in your home. If you sleep on top of the geopathic stress, it instantly is drawing energy from you and causing sickness. And there was actually a woman called Kathleen Bockler who wrote a book, um, Earth Radiation. And she would, she was a dowser. She would go into these homes and she would figure out where the geopathic stress was. She would, um, didn't know anything about the people that live there didn't know um, anything about the energies. She would just take her dousing rods inside homes and say like she would go in a bedroom and find that geopathic stress was going over the head portion of the bed. And she'd say, whoever sleeps here has something wrong with their head. And she was right almost hundred percent of the time. And the simple solution was simply move their bed three feet away from, or right out of that geopathic stress zone, which could be simply a foot away, you know, and they would instantly start recovering. So there's a lot of things like that, that go unnoticed things that are very simple that we could start doing ourselves. We can douse ourselves. You know, I taught myself to douse and that was another thing that you thought would floor me. You know, I would just play around uh, with my pendulum and I didn't even have a pendulum. I would make one. I had a cross necklace and I would, it was on a chain and I would play around with it and ask questions. And I was like, what is going on? It's moving, you know? And I thought that I might've been intentionally moving it unintentionally, but yeah, it was just crazy. I started playing a game where I would be like, I'm going to guess what color underwear you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember doing that when I was in Italy, we were on a tour bus going somewhere and there was a Scottish guide and uh, he didn't have a kilt on or anything, but he was going by and I was like, hmm. And then I, he walked by and I said, you don't have any underwear on. And he goes, why would I? I'm Scottish. <laughs> but it was it was just funny. But it, it builds up your trust and your confidence in yourself and your intuition. And that's our internal compass, our GPS that's here to guide us in this life. And most of us are so disconnected from it. And so just learning techniques and ways to build up that intuition and uh, listen to our guidance, you know, like our loved ones in spirit, they're with us all the time. But since we have free will, they have to sit by and watch us ruin our lives. Most of the time, we have to ask them for help. We have to ask them for guidance and, um, you know, just go with the flow there. It, it, things will be a lot simpler for you. Um, but there's some profound healing experiences I've had one with that pulse electrical magnetic therapy device. And, oh my gosh, I won't even go into that right now because it was, it's a long story, but it was amazing. I can sit by, sit back now and any traumas that I suffered, it's like I was watching a movie. I retained the information, the lesson, but I didn't experience it. That's what I feel like now. And so it can help pulse, or people with post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, people that have really profound traumas that can't function in society. They need to overcome those. And another thing, you know, like the drug addicts and the alcoholics, I think they're some of the most um, powerful people on our planet. They know that, you know, it just feels wrong being here and they're trying to hide from the pain. But once they overcome that, you know, they're going to be some of our most powerful healers as well and on our team. So don't disregard anybody just because of their habits. We all have habits. You know, we're all killing ourselves in, in one way or another. We know we're doing something bad by eating the sugary cake that Tammy baked. <laughs> <laughs> or this or that. That's what my drug of choice is food, you know? So, but you know, it's bad, but you still do it. But there's a lot of things we can delve into sun gazing. We touched on that a little bit yesterday, the power of the sun, you know, um, hundreds of years ago, the church made it illegal for people to look at the sun. Why would they do that? 
that means there's something to it. You know, there's power behind it. It's life-giving energy that's coming from that. You know, and then even these things, like the symbols, this is a honeycomb, okay, to me. But some people would look at it and um, say it's a hexagram and it's an evil symbol, you know. They've hijacked all of our symbols. They've hijacked our words and they're using them against us, you know. It's just like with the pyramids. Some people think pyramids are bad. They're tools. They're all tools that are here for us to use. They can be used for good or bad. They are powered by intention. But if I believe there are way more good people here than bad. So we are going to take control of those and start gaining our intuition, gaining our power back, gaining our health back. They're bombarding us from every avenue. They poison our water. They poison our air. They poison our the frequencies that we're swimming in every day are getting deeper and deeper. Um, they're poisoning our soil so we can't grow pro appropriate food. Um, just everything. They poison our medicines. Why do they have to give us so much poison? You know, a rat, you give them poison one time and they're done. We're not. We're still drudging through all of this. So we are super powerful. We just need to realize that again. And once we become clear and become powerful again, <laughs> you know, there's no stopping us. I couldn't imagine. I, I can't imagine what the world will be like. but. Um, this is, you know, I, I don't know, <laughs> I could go on and on and on, but so we can talk about, you know, manifestation, electro culture, even lots of things like that, but um, I'll stop rambling and take some questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, so uh, Richard is asking if uh, you would, could recommend a resource to help him build a pyramid above his bed to power up during sleep. Yeah, so there's actually a lot of pyramid calculators online. Um, I think one is called Bricklayer, if I remember correctly, bricklayer.com. But you can put the different angles in, um, you know, how long you want the sides, this or that. I would definitely recommend, though, a, a Giza pyramid for over your bed. Um, these are the Russian geometry pyramids. They're a five scaling uh, pyramid and they are steeper the steeper the angle the more powerful they're going to be so these are good for people that like are uh, have been med meditating for a long time um, people who want to instantly manifest things and know how to control their intentions and their, their thoughts um, the Giza pyramid is more for people um, to get proper rest it's more of a calming excuse me energy I like to say it's more like um the dial-up connection, and then this is the high-speed inter internet. So, <laughs> awesome. but yeah, definitely do a Giza pyramid over your bed, though. And if you don't have room to put one over your bed, put it under your bed. The energy that comes out of the apex um, really is powerful as well. Um, and you don't have to have anything like a, an orgon pyramid or anything like that, you know? Um, I simply built one out of cardboard. Just the frame, you know, a, a pyramid out of cardboard, and I would put them underneath my Reiki table when I was doing Reiki healings for people. So nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carlene is asking; she's interested in learning how to get her power back. So that's what we're going to cover in the next few weeks. I wanted to talk with everybody and kind of give you an idea where I'm coming from and the different topics that we can talk about, and see what you guys want to start off with. You know, um, if you want to put that in the chat, um, you know, if any of the topics that I have talked about or mentioned tonight interest you, please put that in the chat. Um, and then we'll just tally those up and see um, what the census is. Um, if you have other things, other topics that you're interested in, why not make it a group effort? Let's do some research on it. You know, let's all just delve in. Maybe none of us know anything about it. Let's delve in and do some research on it. And we'll all take notes and compare notes the next session. Right. So that's the route that we're going to go. It's mainly just, like I said, my truth is my truth. Yours is yours. But when we combine truths and compare notes, I think we're going to find the real truth. So all right. Uh, Jen is asking, can you provide a few simple steps that we can do or say when going into meditation to enhance our power to channel? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So the biggest thing is um, just allowing yourself a space to relax. You don't want to be distracted by noises, by dogs barking, uh, the TV blasting, you know, things like that, at least when you're starting out. 
make sure you, you have an area that's super quiet. Um, if you don't, get some earbuds and listen to a guided meditation <clears throat> or some sort of music on, you know, YouTube. There's lots of videos on there. Um, Solfagio frequencies, those will help bring you down into the, more of a, like you want to get heart based is what you're doing. The heart is the communicator. So you want to get out of your mind. And that's the biggest thing is when you start meditating, some people are so focused on, I want to, um, you know, what is that? What is that coming up? Or what is that? You don't want to notice everything. You want it to float by like a cloud. Okay. Just acknowledge it and let it float by. Okay. That's all the acknowledgement it's going to get. If it's important, it will stay. And then you can retain that information. But, um, Mainly it's just freeing up your mind. They call it the monkey chatter, right? Because <laughs> your mind's constantly chattering all the time. Um, so just freeing up and through breath work and, you know, focusing yourself, centering yourself and grounding too. you know, simple things like grounding yourself to the earth um, that will help you get centered and meditate better. How is asking, do you check, uh, I'm, I'm assuming he means ohms, ohms. Do you check ohms with multimeter or is it really an OHMS? <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Um, I would have to look and see because I'm not sure. I would have to see what it's set at. I think it, it's the N, it's set on the N with a little squiggly line above it. So whatever that is, I'm not. I'm not a super scientist when it comes to something. Some things I just follow what I'm supposed to do, <laughs> but don't know the technical term for it. So, but yeah, it's really cool because you, uh, multimeters aren't that much and you can actually um, splice a wire and rig it up with one simple wire attachment to be able to read your own body's voltage. So like simple things, um, for instance, like underneath here, there's a power strip. Power strips are one of the things that pump out dirty electricity and EMFs to your body. And most of us have a power strip sitting right underneath our computer all day long when we're working, you I know, got power strips all over the house. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can, you can pick up the energies from those a few feet away, right. you know? So, so just having a grounding mat right under my feet with the rod right outside my window, you know, you don't even have to put it in the window. If you have grounded plugs, receptacles, you can plug it into that and that will eliminate the buildup of the extra electrical magnetic frequencies throughout the day. So maybe one of the, uh, one of the sessions you can, if you're able to show us how to build a multimeter, cause you said you rigged yeah. one up, right? Yeah. So we can make one of the, one of the sessions, you know, learning how to actually do that. Tell us what we need how we do it, you know, yes. and um, these are things that if we all have the ability to do something uh, hands on, yes. you know, in our own time, but get the the training ahead of time, that'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, another device that we could, uh, so I'm right now working on the Bob Beck um, blood electrifier. I don't know if anybody has heard of that before. So you wear it around your wrist. So I'm making that. That's my next thing. But my daughter has, she is a holistic nutritionist and she used to do live blood analysis. So she has, she couldn't afford a dark field microscope to analyze her red blood cells and white blood cells. So she made one out of a, a regular microscope. So we have the directions to do that as well. And having access to a dark field microscope to analyze the health of your blood. Oh my goodness. That's one of the most powerful things that you could do. All you need are diabetic lancets to prick your finger, put that drop underneath the mic. That was the hardest thing for me was to prick my finger, you know, and I was just <laughs> looking at all the blood. I mean, it was just amazing. And you can see the effects. Like I'll put pyramid water or water inside my pyramid and let it charge for a couple of weeks. And then I will test my blood before when I first wake up in the morning, then I'll drink some of that water, test my blood like 20, 30 minutes later. It's just amazing. Instant separation of the blood cells are moving so fast. And I mean, it's just crazy. But having access to some a tool like that would be very beneficial for a lot of people. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right. Do you know of any medical device or other chi enhancers that uh, that Richard could use at home to improve improve his health? Uh, well, it depends on what he's trying to improve, but I would say the simplest thing would be 
um, a lot of the things that we're going to talk to so or talk about. So just keep coming to these meetings and you're going to start learning more and more about the different things because we're all going to work on that as a team. But simple things like learning how to douse and figure out where geopathic stress is in your home, seeing if you're sleeping on top of that or not you know, um, grounding, you know, you can build your own grounding mat. And that's something I can teach people as well. I didn't have the money to buy one when I first started. I made one out of, um, what was it? Conductive tape. And uh, yeah, I messed my mattress all up because I had my mattress all taped up, but it worked. <laughs> but it started pricking me after a while, you know, but it worked. <laughs> so no, that's yeah, awesome. oh, we're going to go over that stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, Richard's also asking if you know of any spiritual spiritualistic churches or in Maryland, Pennsylvania or Virginia where he could uh, uh, contact a medium or, or take lessons. So most of the mediums ever since COVID hit, most of them offer um, online Zoom type sessions like this. You don't have to be physically right there with them. Um, they could definitely tune in. I no longer do that right now. I'm just so busy. I have my hands in many things, but also I just kind of wanted that disconnect. I want to teach people. I'd rather teach people how to do it themselves than to connect. But I definitely feel that there is a need for a profound medium reading first, you know, to kind of open you up to that. So even, you know, look up Lilydale. Um, it's a big spiritualist community and they have like 20, 30 mediums that live up there all year round. Yep, that's on. Uh, that's on the the western side. Uh, that's a uh, around. It's in New York. Oh, Lily. Yeah, Lilydale's in New York. Yeah. There's another one over by Pittsburgh. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Because, oh, I didn't know uh, that. Yes, because we have some members that actually uh, event hosts that are close to that area. Um. All right. Does dowsing produce the same results as using a pendulum? Yes. Yeah, it's just a different tool for dowsing. Yeah. Right. So Beth is asking, since you learned about being a medium in a class, can you teach us those steps that you learned during one of these sessions? Yeah, so I am new to connecting consciousness. I was a member several months ago, and then I fell off for a while. So I just want to get familiar with the rules and stuff before that. Um, I don't want to, you know, overstep. I don't know. I know there's rules on conjuring up spirits or something. So I don't know if that would be an, an entail in that. Do you know what I mean? So. Right. Yeah, we'll have to figure that out. But yep. definitely, I would love to. I One of the classes I used to teach at my daughter's um, holistic center was an, an, an intuition development circle. And it would be a group of people that have never experienced anything like this before. And I would call upon their guides and loved ones and spirit to step into our circle and impress upon each member loving messages for, for them at this time. We would all sit there with the pen and paper with our eyes closed for about five, 10 minutes and pick up messages or pay attention to our thoughts, our feelings, emotions and stuff. And it was just such confirmation when you would read your, Hey, this is what I got for you. Not necessarily me, but people that have never done this before, you know, and they're reading, Hey, this is what I got for you. You know, it doesn't mean I don't know what it means. And then that person is like, Oh my gosh, it means this to me. You know, it's like really profound to them. And it kind of gives them the confidence then to start trusting their intuition more and more. Right. You know, uh, Marianne said that she had uh, she has a small PEMF unit uh, that she purchased from Miramate. So that's in the chat. If um, if anybody wanted to go look that up, she said it did amazing things for her. Uh, what is it called again? Miramate, Miramate, M-I-R-A-M-A-T-E. OK. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh, so um, so Deborah is saying that she commands her spirit to drop my, her thoughts from her mind into into her heart. She says this three times and it helps her integrate her mind with her heart and it calms her nervous system down so oh, she can yeah. see herself and listen. Yeah, well, that's yep. a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. great. Uh, see, Richard actually just started using a grounding mat on his mattress this week. <laughs> Do you re recommend other indoor grounding tools or prefer standing outside with bare feet? I like bare feet. I am always walking around in bare feet, but I live in the middle of the woods away from everybody and um, in the country. But um, I think you definitely, if you're inside working on a computer all the time, you know, um, definitely you want a grounding mat there. And if you know, sleeping takes up a lot of our lives. So that's the first place that you want to heal is your bed area. Make sure you're not sleeping over top of geopathic stress. Make sure, you know, if you have a grounding mat and 
pain and inflammation will start going away, you know, cause we're just, we're swimming in a soup of electrical magnetic frequencies and it's just building more and more every day, you know? Nice. So it helps just, yeah. Get yep. rid of those energies. Yep. Need grounding mats. All right. We only have a few more minutes here. Are there scalar energy devices you are aware of that work? Yeah. So we actually make, um, one of the devices I make and Charlie makes too for Stargate pyramids is a caduceus coil mm. and it produces scalar waves as well. And you can actually hook it up, uh, to play solfagio frequencies. And there's a couple of different ways that you can hook it up. When you hook it up to a speaker to play frequencies through it, you're not going to hear the freak, hear any sound coming out the other end because it's playing through and looping back up through the coil and creating those scalar waves. Um, but there's really no science out there that any of these work. You just have to be able to feel energies and, and kind of test it for yourself, you know, to see if they work or not. But we have a lot of um, good results from people that have been using them. And we just uh, started um, research with the device that I'm, I'm studying to use more is called the BioWell. It's like a curly and photography camera on crack. Like it has so many different uses. Um, and it reads your bio field, your bio energy and your chakras and things like that. So we'll be doing a lot of diff different testings, not only with the pyramids, but with the caduceus coils and our other products as well. Yeah. The first time I ever used uh, the caduceus coil, I was all upset because I thought I was going to hear the music and I'm yep. like, I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> yep. I always hook up a spe an extra speaker. So oh. there's, there is sound coming through that speaker as well as going through the coil. It would just be like hooking up another uh, another speaker to your sound system, you know. Hmm. But there is a way to do it because I oh, need I'm... to hear the music too. I like yeah. hearing the music. <laughs> yeah, I was a little disappointed I didn't hear any music. But see, I did yeah. it on my phone. So all right, we'll have to. You'll have to teach me how to do that. Um, Christine, Christine went to was recently in Sedona. Uh, went to a vortex and took my shoes off, and I received a double whammy of energy. Do you know if there is any vortexes in our area of PA that we can visit? Oh, gosh, yeah, I'm sure there are. I haven't explored many, but um, I just traveled to Tennessee and I went right through Ohio, a place that was on my bucket list to stop at was Serpent Mound. And I have never been there and I always wanted to go and I didn't get a chance to this time. But um, there is a lot of spiritual locations around the country. Mm -hmm. um, what was it yesterday, Tammy, when you was it you, you looked up how many pyramids were in the United no, States? You said, you said 2000. You said there was about 2000 pyramids in. I think in, you looked it up, though. I think you looked it up and found that online. But yeah, uh, there's a lot just in the US. Yeah. And there's one in Quakertown, PA. Oh, really? Yes. But it was okay. a little creepy. Hal sent that video and I looked at it yesterday. It was, <laughs> it was really kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want creepy. <laughs> okay. Um, Jen's asking, could we do an intuition circle here on Zoom? Yes, oh, wait, of course. We could do an intuition circle here on Zoom. Right. Yes, I think so. Yes. Yeah, that's going to be, we would want to keep it small though, because like I said, we're going to spend probably five minutes per, usually I would keep it around 10, eight to 10 people. Um, but we could do a couple of different ones. You know, if we have more interest than that, I used to have about 20 people every week at my daughter's shop when I was doing them there. So people really like it. Nice. But I just okay. like, we need to figure out the rules and stuff about it. Make sure we're not, you know. Right. Okay. Uh, do you have any, any suggestions on the best grounding mats that are out there? Um, there, there's really not much to a grounding mat. And there's, like I said, as long as you have a device to test it, you'll be fine. Um, I just got something bliss, I believe on Amazon. I just bought some of those, but I also have some from earthing.com as well. And earthing, the ones from earthing.com are a little more expensive, but you also get the, the book of all the work on the grounding and the information. I think he sends a couple books. Um, and he has a great documentary. Um, I can't think of his name right now, but he has a great documentary about his grounding work um, on YouTube as well. Nice. Okay. And last message here, or last question. Do you think the tone generator apps, apps one can download reproduce frequencies accurately? Okay. So I think the the tone generator app, she's asking if, if they can reproduce the frequencies yeah. accurately. 
Um, so digital is always going to lose a lot of frequencies. Um, you know, if you had a record, <laughs> an old style record, that would be the best frequency that you could actually generate to true. Um, but it'll still resonate, you know, they still work, but it's not as good as if you had the, the real, like a, a singing bowl or a sound pipe or something like that, you know, that would be the best option. We can do singing bowls one night too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I have sound pipes that are really nice. Okay. And I, I have a heart chakra singing bowl as well. Um, so we could all gather up our singing bowls and our instruments and and have yep. like a night of, of sound therapy. How cool would that be? Yes. So yeah, see, this is this is what's nice because we can generate ideas as we go along. Um, yeah. It doesn't have to be an intense, you know, think about whatever the topic is. This is where we can all shine and just come together and, and just come up with some really cool things to help all of us heal. So now this is For good. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. If there's no other questions, it is eight o'clock. We're going to um, close out this, this, uh, this presentation. And I thank you so much, Lisa. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening. I'm sorry. I like to ramble sometimes too. So I apologize. <laughs> That's quite a right. But yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Have a blessed evening.